again, what a joy it is to start our day in God's word. There are so many gems and revelations in the word of God that are there for us. So we need to start our day in the word of God. And we're going into chapter 13 of Acts today, and it says this. Now, in the church that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers. There were certain prophets and teachers. You know, we saw in uh, the earlier part of Acts chapter 2 that Christ appointed apostles. And so now we have apostles, prophets, and teachers. And really in Acts 8, we see the beginning of the ministry of the evangelist. So what is this saying to us? Listening to the strategy of the Spirit will direct and show you how to know God's will. One, for your life. Two, for the situation that you are in right now. And three, for a change of direction. You know, Paul uh, had been down in Tarsus and Barnabas was sent down or went down to bring him back up uh, to Antioch there they were ministering together and a group of prophets and teachers who were in the church, listen, from many different countries, showing the gospel is for all, came together and then began to prophesy over the life of Barnabas and Paul and what direction they were to take. Now, it would have been quite comfortable to stay in Antioch they estimate Antioch was a huge church, a successful church. And here is Paul and Barnabas heading this successful church up. But the journey that they were to take was one of hardship, one of beatings, one of shipwrecks, one of, of uh, going without food. And yet it was also one of establishing the church throughout the known world. In Ephesians chapter 4, we read these words. And verse 11, And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. Verse 12 says, what, why did God do this? Why did God give us apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers? It says in verse 12, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to, to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man, to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. Here we see four different types of ministry. One, we see the apostle. Now, let me say here, before I go on, there are many people today calling themselves apostles, and they are not. If you are young in the ministry, if you haven't fulfilled what I've just read, and uh, then you need to weigh up what your calling is. And if that's not an apostle, step out of that line because you're not in the will of God. But we're not going into that today. But there are apostles, there are prophets, there are evangelists, and then there are pastors and teachers. Why do we have these gifts in the church? The purpose of these gifts is one, to perfecting or the perfecting of the saints for the ministry. You know, the job of these five or four ministry gifts are above is to take young believers, is to take believers and begin to impart into them the teaching of God's word 
But more important than even that is the impartation of the Holy Spirit so that they would understand how to live and walk and operate in the spirit realm. This is what is missing in the church today. We have titles, but we do not have an understanding of the spirit realm. We do not have an understanding of the Holy Spirit. So the purpose of these gifts is the perfecting of the saints for the ministry, two, the building up of the church, three, the establishing of the unity of the faith, four, to bring the knowledge of Jesus Christ, five, to bring the church into a full maturity status. Oh, we need this today, church. We need to see the church grow up. You know, even right now in this coronavirus, they are estimating that when the church begins again, that only one, uh, the one in three will not go back. What does that tell us? It tells us that there is not a maturity in the believers. We need to see that happen. Six, that we might be conformed into the image of Christ. Wow, this is what this ministry gift about. Lastly, as we begin to close, establish in to be established in the word so that they would not be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine and slight cunning of deceptional man. You know, again, this is something that uh, breaks my heart when I see people listening to false doctrine, running after ideas, you know, people that when I go to meetings just because there's a prophet there so they can get a prophetic word. You know, I get it on Facebook and other areas. People will contact me. Do you have a word for me? You know, we need to be established in God's word so that we get our own words you know, and, and so that we can grow in God ourselves. As I close, and I know our time's gone, let me give you an illustration. Smith Wigglesworth was going to a meeting one day and uh, the spirit of God spoke to him as he walked into the uh, walking to the church and God said to him, go into that house. And so he turned around instantly because he knew the voice of God and he went up and the front door was unlocked. So he opened the door. He knocked first, no voice, no sound. He opened the door and he went into that house. And here was a man in the bathroom with rope around his neck, ready to commit suicide. Smith Wigglesworth spoke into his life and brought him down from there and ministered to him and then turned around and left and went to the meeting. Halfway through the meeting, this man turned up and gave his heart to Jesus. You see, that is being led by the Spirit. That is understanding the strategy of the spirit. So this day, as you go forth, go forth being led by the spirit, not by your flesh, being led by the spirit. Well, this is Prophet Tom. Our time goes so quick of a morning. God bless you. And I'll be with you again tomorrow morning.